Good evening and welcome to week three, uh, or vlog three, for educational applications of computer-mediated communications. So uh, over the last couple weeks, I was definitely reminded of, the, um, of a quote I saw on Twitter last year by James McKivy, hopefully I'm saying his name right, where he says, when people adapt technology, they do old, new, old things in new ways. Uh, but when people internalize technology, they find new things to do. And as we talked about augmented reality and social media and Second Life, I think we're really talking about uh, a complete shift to how we integrate technology and definitely need to get to that point where we internalize it. And in many respects, I feel like I've internalized it, but uh, I was caught off, by, off guard by a few uh, comments or thoughts um, in the articles last week and this week, and especially as I'm facilitating or teaching an AQ course online right now. So the first article by Boyd uh, last week on the history of social media uh, was really enlightening, and it was amazing to see the, imp the input that users had in the social networks that they were participating in. And the story of MySpace, I think it's page 217, uh, where MySpace actually went out to the musicians that were using their tool and said, how can we make this tool work better for you? Uh, really made me think of how I receive input. So I know I always do a PMI at the end of the course. I ask them uh, what they liked, what they didn't like, and all of that kind of ideas. But I don't always just ask that open-ended question ahead of time saying, how could I make the environment work for you? And this week I had an individual that uh, actually posted a question looking for an area where they could just chat. Um, and we've done that in the past, so set it up set up a water cooler area for him to talk about baseball and some people are talking about movies and just different ideas. Uh, and it made me think, how could, I, how could I make the online learning environment more fluid and more of a natural fit for the group? I know face-to-face, -face, it's um, a different experience. It's definitely much more fluid. Uh, just even thinking in my own classroom, things changed as kids changed and as the environment changed and as the task changed but yet online we have a much more rigid structure and then looking at um, D.H. Lee's article this week uh, with neo-millennial learning styles how can we bring in those three elements of active learning of the curation of the um, of the multimodal forms of media into the online learning environment. And I think I definitely try to bring in the multimodal form. Uh, I think curation is definitely an area that I need to work on and see how I could bring that in. But with the neo-millennial learning styles and the multimodal, I love bringing in the variety of different media, but I worry again that I'm going from my own perspective. Uh, so I'm interested to see this week what some of their strengths are and to see if I can differentiate a bit more. Um, I just even was caught off guard since I um, I use a lot of audio and video and uh, this session I have a, um, a candidate that has uh, a hearing disability. So it's definitely making me reevaluate which tools I use and uh, how I can make that learning environment more conducive. So those are just some of my thoughts. It's great chatting with all of you. Have a great night.